Yeah, one horse and then hill in one of the meadows. Again, it's quite good quality meadowland, but that's not particularly what we're looking at here. And we're near this line of trees here, which are aspens. This for that again. And we know we've got a population here on this site of a species of moth called the light orange underwing, which is regarded as a reasonably scarce species. The geometrid moth and they fly in sort of springtime, well at this time, yeah, obviously April, sometimes into March, April, sometimes make it into May. And they tend to fly quite high up around the canopy of these aspens, which are the food plant of the caterpillars. And that makes it rather difficult to confirm them because although you can see them with the naked eye or with binoculars when they're flying up there, there is another very similar species called the orange underwing, which has similar habits and similar behaviours. And although that doesn't feed on aspen, it can be flying around and you can't really be confident that what you're seeing is the light orange underwing. So I've been scanning up here for a little while. There's other things going on at the moment. There's a various spring migrant birds arriving. You can hear chiff chaff and black cap, I suspect, quite clearly. But I've been scanning these and seeing the, some of these moths flying up the top here and suspecting the were the light orange underwing because that's the species that's known from here and that we confirm most years. But so far this year, I've not had a one reliably confirmed. And then fortunately one came down a bit lower. I was able to swing a net and get it into a net. Um, so let me quickly explain what we're going to be looking for so we can identify this, this species level, confirm that it is light orange underwing rather than orange underwing. So what I've got here is the electronic version one of the moth field guides produced by the fine folk at Nature Guides. And the species we've got here is light orange underwing, which is this one. The similar species, you can see it's quite similar, is the orange underwing. And although there are some features of variation in the upper wings and so on that, that can be a hint, they're not really reliable. So really there's two features you need to look at when you're working through these moths to work out which one you've got and one of those features only applies on the males so that's always a bit of a challenge because you've got to make sure the one you've got is a male fortunately this one is and that's the structure of the antennae so here on light orange underwing which is the species we expect to have here as you can see the, the antennae are slightly thickened and slightly feathered on this image whereas on the males of orange underwing, which is the other species, the confusion species, the antennae are slightly serrated, or basically just straight. So that's one feature, and it works if you've got a male. It doesn't work if you've got a female, because if you look at the females, the antennae of the females of both species are just slim. So the other feature that's used, and this is reliable, but again, challenging to see, is the underside of the hind wing. And what you're looking at there is whether this dark bar on the outer of the underside of the hindwing, so this is where it attaches to the body, for people who aren't familiar with visualising moth wings not attached to the body. This is the, the edge that fly, it is leading when it flies, this is the trailing edge when it flies, and this is the outer, bar, outer edge. And on the species we've got here, that we expect to have here, the light orange underwing, the outer bar is unbroken you can see it's brown all the way around on the other species orange underwing there is this dash protrudes through it so that's how we tell these apart and as i say we managed i managed earlier to capture one of these species specimens so if you look here you can hopefully see from there that the antennae are a bit thickened 
So this is a male, so that's helpful because that's got the antennae feature. So that's enough to confirm that this is light orange underwing. But you can also see the underside of the hind wing here. Um, whoops, where well you could before it was flying. Let me see if it'll stay sitting still. Well, hopefully you could see before that started flying that the underside of the hind wing has an unbroken brown bar. It doesn't have that orange tooth running through it. So that confirms that as light orange underwing. Um, now, the species is regarded as being nationally scarce. It's regarded as being reasonably unusual. So it is a good, it's a good thing to record here and it's good, we get it every year, it's good to confirm each year, to have a proper confirmed record and to check that it's not the slightly more common orange underwing, which also occurs, uh, well, well, which hasn't been recorded from here, but it's, you know, occurs not long ways away from here. So that's always useful to confirm. It's always good to just be sure that we have still got what we thought we had. This is rather an attractive moth, as I say. And it spends most of its time way up there, the top. But this one fortunately came down. Let me identify him. Let me see who he is. Let me see if we can have another look at that. I can't wait to see the relevant bit of the hind wing. So there we go, that's light orange underwing. Confirmed the identification. I took a couple of pictures before. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let it go. I'm going to see if I can do that in a way that lets you see it fly out of this pot. But that could be quite challenging. Oops, what's going on there? So I'll stand up here, hold the pot here with the moth towards the bottom of the thing. Just let it go down a bit. And hopefully it'll then fly up. There we go. Up, up there way up to where it wants to be, up in the canopy, searching away there now. I've lost it for presumably a female to mate with and she will lay her eggs and they'll feed on the developing buds and I think possibly the flowers of this aspen. So there we go, it was light orange underwing, a reasonably unusual moth, at least according to the known distributions, although it is possible likely even that given its habit of flying way up here and being small and hard to identify that it may be a little bit under recorded but nevertheless that was a nice record to get and i thought it'd be useful to share it on here so i'm going to sign off there